So thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, this is a talk about Rust. I think everybody in the room master uh, a many two language, I think, on almost Java. Okay, so this is not a talk for to learn how to make a if or while loop or something. I will. This is a talk to understand why Rust exists and why you sh can use it. Maybe you should use it. So uh, Rust was a language uh, built by Mozilla. The idea is. Who use Firefox? Not me. Okay, some people. Okay, so behind Firefox, uh, they previously they use C and C++. It's a huge base code in C++. It's a mess. Okay, with every, uh, we have many errors uh, related to the memory and all this kind of stuff. And so the idea to rewrite uh, Firefox was to create a new language because C++. They don't want to recreate Firefox with C++ again. That would be the, the same thing. So it's why Rust came from Mozilla. So uh, the idea is we have a lot of error related to the memory. Okay, like null. Uh, this is null reference. This I don't know if it's a paper. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. We have an abstract, so I think it's a paper. Uh, so. I have a lot of null reference and null pointer exception in runtime during the production, okay? And this thing break features, and we don't want this, okay? Most of the error w you can get in when you write C or C++ code is related to the memory, okay? It's why this language are unsafe. So, and the cost of an error is if you make a chart of this and if you relate the code to the environment, what I mean by environment, it's the lifetime of the project. If you read the error during the compilation, that costs nothing, okay? You don't break a feature. Is that called not runtime? It's be, that can be a mess because if you use a Tomcat server that took like 15 minutes just to boot and you have to make some calls to reach this error, that can be a mess, okay? Integration, it's fine, still, but in production, that costs a lot, okay? Break a feature just for a null pointer exception is it, terrible, okay? <laughs> sure. So, uh, the idea is to get all the error during the compilation time. Memory, to get the memory safety, you need to remove at least four error. The, w the first one is done link pointer, the other one buffer overflow, of course, double free, and data race, okay? Uh, for people that don't know what is free mean, it's when you unallocate the memory. Okay, so you, you, in C you have malloc or calloc, and, uh, TC malloc, I don't know, I forgot. <laughs> but, and so to liberate this memory, you, to free this, you have to call this method free. So if you call free again on a memory, that, that can be a, a security risk. And that arrays is when you have two process that will try to write on the same memory zone at the same time. And what will happen, we don't know. It's why it's terrible. So if you try in C++ to cover this, you can't, okay? You can use some Vagrin plugins and st stuff like that. C++ have things like unique pointer or chain pointer, but Okay, that work at compile time, but it's the signature of your type is bigger, okay? You can, um, the thing is obvious works, it's you create this unique pointer and encapsulate what you want in this unique pointer, and after that you have to call move uh, every time. It's very painful. So, and if you don't move it, if you try to move it, uh, without calling move, that create a compiler error, okay? If, if you use move, it's fine. And to reset this, this counter, you have to call reset, okay? Simple stuff in C++, but a little boring to do. And you can bypass this with pointer or pointers, because in C++ or C, magics can happen. <laughs> and so if you have garbage collector, like in Java or things like that, you can solve some of the problem, but not the data erase problem, okay? So we want something, a language that provides memory safety, but 
with C, C++, or, gab or language with garbage collector, we can reach this, okay? So you fall like a knight on this mission. You're like, okay, what, what exists in the, in the environment to solve this? So they create Rust, <laughs> the solution. <laughs> Uh, Rust, the, the idea of Mozilla was to create uh, an efficient language available. What I mean by efficient is that you need to run as fast as C or C++, okay? The same performance. So it's not, we, we, they, their mission is to recreate Firefox, so they need a language very fast. And reliable, so you need memory safety and thread safety because you have to you want to write some concurrency code, okay, very easily and we, without data race. So, and the light put would to be productive. You don't, you need, now in the language, I think we need some tooling like package manager or something, things that you don't have in C++. Or, uh, in C++ you can have, in C, not really. And so Rust, his goal is to cover only this, okay? Here he reached some other goals, but it's these four, uh, four goals that matters, okay? So how Rust uh, works, it's based on the object capability model, this paper. Don't read it, it's very boring. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> so that was in, vi in uh, the paper was invited, oh. Uh, 23, okay, and um, so it's based on this, you have a multiple language that use this object capability model, like uh, I think you, you should take a look to Pony2, E, and the other one, I don't know, um, I never try it, but E and Pony are very fun, okay, they are two, two languages based on the Hacktor model. So Rust employed this object capability, he renamed this thing to call this ownership, and the ownership is based on the type system. So everything, uh, you will not have an overhead at runtime, which is very fun. So always work. So you have a scope, okay, this scope, with a double brace. And I create a variable, by, by default it's immutable, everything in Rust. If you want to be mutable, you have to put a mute here, okay? It's inspired on OCaml or something. Uh, so at the end of the scope, okay, like 42, uh, the ownership of 42 is variable, okay? This is a scope. So at the end of the scope, nobody, uh, the and this is the end of life of variable because nobody uses it anymore, okay? So you lose the ownership, and we can free the variable here. So it's why Rust doesn't need a garbage collector. Okay, so it's fast as C and C++, and you don't have to manage the memory by yourself, by, your, by hand, with malloc and free. Okay, this is very smart. Uh, so, and to transfer the ownership, it's like that. Let's create a string, okay? Uh, this is the first time for some people you receive uh, some Rust code, so this is how we create a function, fn, I think. <laughs> because we are very lazy, some people try to the keyword fun, but it's too long, three letters too long. Oh, seriously, fn is cool. And so you have brace, okay, and I think it's, that, that looks like some OCaml code, I think. So you create S1, which, which is a string, okay, an immutable string, and you transfer the ownership of S1 to S2, okay? So it's like, uh, it's like if you try to use S1 again, okay, then we create an error, okay, this one. Let's take a look at the, this is very readable, okay, this is a compiler error, of the, uh, of the Rust C compiler. And so the, mes the message is here, you, move over the v you moved a value S1, okay? So the, mov the value moved here, okay? It tells you value used after a move, okay? But why we have this error? Because in the, uh, that's my story, okay? In the C word, okay, with Pony, we had uh, a little code, okay? with some function, but this code 
grooves, okay, of, of course, the time passed. And uh, one day, so we call do something here on this pointer, okay, and I added a new method which free the new pointer before the do something, okay? So what will happen is, so you create the pointer, you can mark everything, you call run things, and after that you, you call do something, which here it's sure that we create a sec fault, okay? And maybe that can be a security risk, okay? Some file or something. So all this covered by Rust is with the ownership, okay? You transfer the ownership all the time, okay? Um, so uh, with this thing, you avoid uh, something like called use after free, okay? It's for the purpose, so you cover one of the bullet points and the double free because you don't need a garbage collector. You see how we, be, how we come to be a memory safety model? So we have this function, okay, so to prevent the after a double three is very easy. Let's create a string, okay. Let's calculate the length. I call the function, another one. Uh, for the return of the function, we use the arrow key, okay, the arrow keyword, because uh, some people uh, at the core team of the language think they are mathematician. So <laughs> like in maths, we use arrow. Okay, fine. And <laughs> so the thing is, S is transfer in the scope here of the function, okay? So the ownership of S is given to calculate length, okay? And after that, the S here, the S length, we just return this U size, not the, we don't return the ownership, okay? So the ownership here is loose, okay? So the memory for the string is free by the, the compiler, okay? You put the free here. Thing is, when you call print and the length, and we reuse the S, the S normally is free here. So the compiler will show this. Uh, you borrow a moved value, S, so the value move it here, and you, you use it after a move, just right here, okay? So if maybe someone in, C in a C code put a free and use it again, use it the same pointer again, you will have an error, okay? You can have the same in Java. If I put a nil somewhere else and you use your function, your, uh, your variable or something after that, you will have a null pointer exemption. And maybe that will break fe features in production, things you don't want. Fine. This is clever, no? <laughs> funny, funny. You don't have a garbage collector? Uh, if prevent from more of the error from uh, around memory it was pretty clever. So to pass this, you can use the um, you can return the ownership, okay, like this one. Uh, in Rust, we have um, what we call, uh, a tuple. This, is, yeah, like in OCaml or maybe Kotlin, not this. Okay, Kotlin, not this. Thank you. Uh, so this is a tuple, and uh, here I return the S, okay? okay? So I give back the ownership, okay, to, to S. So I can use S again. It's all, we, all this work. But it's very, very painful to retransfer the ownership again and again and again. So it's why they made an extension of the object capability model. You remember this paper? They create the, bor the bor borrowing extension. So the borrowing extension is like something trivial, okay? It's like I will share some, something to someone, but it's st I, uh, I still have the ownership of this thing, okay? Like, uh, I take this, take it, okay? This is, st I still have the ownership, okay? But now I borrow to him, so Edward, you can use it, and give me after that, okay? Because I still have the ownership. I can decide when I want to free this. He can't decide this, okay? Pretty clever. Thanks for your participation. <laughs> <laughs> and good catch. <laughs> uh, so, data risk can happen because if you do a, bon uh, a borrowing, okay, it's like creating multiple pointers on the same memory, okay? 
The thing is, you, all, you can have data arrays when you have mutable, uh, mutable data, sorry, with many reference on it, okay, on this same zone. So, the, um, to, to cover this, we, the, the compiler worked with uh, some rules, okay, you can create two uh, borrowing, uh, two, two pointers to the same memory, two point, mutable pointers to the same memory, uh, so at least one in the right model, and, uh, and this mechanism, uh, why I'm reading this, <laughs> I don't know why I put this, it's a mechanism, uh, hmm, hmm. Yeah, it's because in same of uh, type of language, uh, you, you you can have uh, the keyword to specify when you are mutable or not. Okay, it's why you can have multiple pointers on the same things, but most of the language don't provide this and Rust don't. Okay, so obvious work, breaking or extension of the model. Uh, the reference must always be valid, so you can't make a reference to something uh, that was the allocate before. And at any given time, you need one boring mutable reference to something, okay? You can have immutable reference, or any you want, but a mutable reference, only one. So let's look at our example. So you have the cocoa length, I use it, this thing. Okay, it's, I know people are scary about this because that remember C++ code uh, during, the, during the, the high school and things, but no, it's fine. <laughs> it's not really a reference, okay? So you calculate the length and you pass the ownership uh, on, this is only in um, immutable way, okay? Here you can just read, okay? We have to put a mute here, uh, no, sorry, here, and um, yeah, here too, to give a non-ownership in mutable way, okay? So, so now the code is pretty much um, pretty, I think. <laughs> I don't know. You are the judge. And uh, so the, the thing is, uh, the ownership and the borrowing is put in the type system, as you can see, okay? So that co don't cost at runtime, okay? Pretty fun, and so everything is readable. Uh, so you see, I, I need this thing in Java or Kotlin because uh, when you have a, a function, you sometimes you don't know if the value the variable will be modified or not. Okay, with this thing, every signature of your function become very readable. Okay, that makes your API more stronger, and the compiler optimizes this. So as I can say, you. Uh, so you can use the reference mutable or reference immutable, okay, this thing. And so for mutable reference, is if I create a string here and two mutable reference on the same string, okay, I use them, that will create a compiler error, okay? First mutable occurs here and the second mutable borrow occurs here, okay? It's pretty readable, okay? I, I love com the, the compiler error message. <laughs> it's very clean. So, how this thing work under the hood? So, uh, some of you are, have heard about formal method or not? Oh, some people. Okay, fine. So, formal method is like, it's a math way to prove that your algorithm will work, okay? It's easier. You create a predicate, okay? And after that, you put condition. And you will pass on all the predicating condition and verify that it's all true, okay? So the, uh, the borrow checker, the, this piece of, uh, in the compiler that check the memory, like everything is good, is called the borrow checker, okay? And so the, the Rust team just defined uh, something they call a low one, okay? So it's a rule. And after that, they put some condition. Okay, so if you want mutability on uh, on X, you have to declare X mutable. Okay, this is a simple one. Or mutable for immutability, you see, you have to declare X with an immutable. So s someone put a let or just a let mute. Uh, let's take a quick look on the compiler. So 
the, just to see uh, all this work, it's not really hard. Uh, the compiler, the, the borrow checker, is just a few lines of code, okay? Like 500, okay? Just for the big part, but all the other file are tiny too, okay? I think. Yeah, true and good. okay. So this is not very complicated, okay? And uh, get all the hands in this thing. I remember what I get, the FN barrel. Uh, yeah, I want this one. Where is it? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. So it's something very clear we have in here. It's something uh more hmm. <laughs> Overning capture. Okay, okay, be because all this fine is the endpoint for to verify if the a borrow is okay. Okay. And so that's um that's a point to s uh, now you can see more Rust code more complicated, okay? But it's, it's easy to read, okay? The, the magic of the borrow checker is very tiny. And all the things around immutability and this thing are in this tiny function. So the borrow checker is not magic, okay? It's just a tiny piece of uh, clever algorithm, okay? There's that. So this is a checkpoint. That you can take a brief just for a few, min a few moments. You can ask a question for things you have seen on, the, on this session, and after that I will continue to other. You have two more checkpoints. You have some question on what you have seen. Yeah? So it seems like one of the, the main benefit is you catch all of these types of issues at compile time. Yeah, yeah. You, you catch all the, all the memory issues at compile time. So you don't have this issue in production which makes you very happy because when you compile your code in Rust, you're sure that will work. Yeah. <laughs> Not the algorithm part. You're get, you know, you're the runtime errors yeah, a lot. Yeah. I wanted to clarify something you said about you only allowed one musical reference. Is that, is that one musical reference per like, object or is it for the entire scope? Uh, it's on the scope. Okay, you can have uh, one mutable reference in uh, directly on the parent scope, okay, and all the child scope. But uh, I mean, um, I think <laughs> it's hard. Uh, if you, so if I have a string S one hello and there's another string S two. Yeah. Well, can I mean take both at the same time? Or yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it's parallel, Jack. Okay, okay. Oh, you mean if it's a stack-oriented program, a language? It's a stack-oriented program. Is it, what was your question? <coughs> they will check the, the both, heap and stack. Yeah, the both. Because the, this is not related to the, where the memory is, okay? The, 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 the borrow checker is after the generation of the bytecode, okay? The LLVM bytecode. No, it's be before. It's a hash year, a higher intermediate representation of the REST code. Okay. Is it free? You don't need free Yeah, because the compiler, will, the, the compiler will put the free for you. It's why. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, 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 you will have a compilation error for sure. Fine, we continue. Okay, fine. So we want to write concurrency code because we don't have covered the point of data arrays. Okay, so to write concur concurrency program, which tool can we use? We'll use the same tool. Okay, because in Rust, the straight 
all the threads are isolated from each other with a scope, okay? So the compiler doesn't know what is a thread, okay? It just when you create a thread due to ownership, you have a block, okay? And so the thread will take the ownership of this block. That's pretty funny because to write concurrency program, you have two ways. The first one is to use um, other binaries. Like in Go, uh, you have to use a diagnostic tool. Like th this program is from the example of the Go manual uh, that creates, oh, I forgot all the time, uh, this is a hash map, okay? Of, no, this is a map string to string, and they create, for people that don't know how to write Go, this is uh, how to create a, um, a green thread. So they create a thread, okay? That's, so in this thread, they change the value in the map, and on the main thread, they change the, the map too, okay? So you can have a data race because at the same time, they can change um, the, the same memory location, which you don't want this. So, oh yeah, this, and so you have this conflict here, okay? So, they provide something, uh, so you, you can have this error, uh, which uh, I don't know if this one, no, yeah. So this is a diagnostic tool of Go, okay? You can run your program with Go, I think it's run, uh, minus minus race, okay? And it will put uh, an output with all the data race you found, okay? But have you, uh, some people are writing Go in, with concurrency, no, not really. Have you tried to a big project on a big project, and that work? I tried it and that don't 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 work for me. It depends. We do Yeah. Okay. Did you fix it with this? Yes, and lots of logs. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Also. Okay. Because I tried and that was more painful. Yeah. The all messages quite hard to read, and uh, when you have a lot of Go routine, it's hard, I think. Yeah, I, I saw a hand, no. Okay, was a dream. <laughs> so, and if I try this in a Rust version, I create a hash map here with the mutable uh, way. I create a thread here, so you see this, um, this block. So the uh, ownership of this block is related to the thread. And I do the same. Here I create an insert, and here too, okay? I create the, uh, this is a, yeah, I, I made a channel because in the standard library we have channel too, like in Go, so I, I made the same example. And if I run that, okay, the bug is here too, again, but the compiler show, show this. So it reached uh, an error, like the, the value moves into the closure here, okay? and the value you use after the, after the move, okay? Because what happened, it, oh, sorry. It's here, the hash map, the ownership was given to the thread spawn block, okay? So the ownership of the hash map is given to the thread, not the main thread, okay? So the, with these things, you avoid that arrest problem, which, which is cool, <laughs> seriously. And so the channel API is used the same, okay? Let's ju just take a look, like, we have a send, met send method and a receive method. And on the send method, you see here, I don't have um, the, what do you call this in English? The M person. Okay, you don't have a M person here, okay? Or M person mutable. So this thing will take the ownership of what you send. So after you call a send, you can modify the, the value after that, okay? Which is very cool in the concurrency program. Because you know if you use this, that we will save. And the receive, uh, oh, you, you can see in the, in, the, um, in the return, the type is a result. The standard library of Rust is based on um, all the monad, optional, result, and everything. This It's an um, uh, arithmetic type, so it's pretty cool. We have the same powerful uh, like OCaml, okay, with the map and filter on this, which is cool. So 
Let's, tr let's try something with uh, uh, the channel. So I create a channel, okay? I receive a, a tuple of, with the sender of the receiver. I create a thread, okay? And I will create a vector, like a STD vector for C++. It's a continuous array of memory, okay? That looks like an array. And uh, after, uh, I modif so I send the list of the score, and after that I try to make a push, okay? But maybe the another thread will try to read this vector, the what he received, but I trying to push something, okay? So the recreator that I raise. So this is catch by the compiler, and you have the same error. Use move after a value. Yeah, use a moved value, sorry, okay? which is nice. We remove all the data race problem with the ownership model, which is cool, because we want to create, to write some concurrency program. We have big server now with multiple cores, a lot of CPU, we want to use them, okay? So, uh, furthermore, um, the REST language uh, has more, um, more feature like future async away, closure, pattern matching, uh, trait that look like the straight in Scala, it's the same. We have macro procedure macro that you know allow us to generate code. So take a look, okay? But I will not present this because it's the same in your language. Just to uh, say we have uh, we have them, okay? The I will make a point on the FFE, the foreign function interface, which is to uh, call uh, a language. This is not Rust in Rust, okay? So you can call C code from Rust. And it's very easily, like you just have to make the signature of the function of C in C, okay? Put the keyword export uh, before that, and that's all, okay? So it's very easy to call C code from Rust. And with that, so we bring all the library uh, written in C and C++. Okay, so we get all the community of C++. It's cool to migrate some C, C++ code to Rust with these things, because FFI is very powerful. This is another checkpoint. Do you have some question on ETC? Uh, <laughs> good point. Uh, that don't work. It's uh, we call this unsafe. I'll show you. Um, oh, we make some richer doing the talk. It's not a good idea. But I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where is it? Oh, come on. Yeah. You, you have to write th this block, okay, and save and the, function, the C function here. So the, the compiler will say, in this block you can be unsafe, but after this block you, should, you must be safe, okay? Just that. Good question. Another one question? Yeah, so uh, that move, yeah, uh, sorry, I forgot to explain this. You have the move keyword uh, close to the straight spawn, uh, just uh, right after. That move, the, uh, that force to move the ownership to the thread. That's why. Well, everything in that current scope. Uh, on the parent scope. Right. Yeah. <coughs> right. Are there other options for that? Uh, for two. Uh, no, we just have move. I think it's enough. <laughs> uh, no, I think. Well. Uh, which collection you want? Oh yeah, it's uh, they're all in the standard library. You have B three. Uh, Vector, uh, Ash map, everything. Oh, I think it's just write once, right? One, one, one writer. Oh, ah, okay. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's very difficult to use uh, this 
collection, like uh, a binary tree is not trivial with uh, the ownership model. So yeah, that, uh, that can be painful sometime. Two? Uh, no, no, I use. With ownership system. Oh, uh, yeah, you can done safely, but uh, it's just hard to write because the ownership is. Uh, if you want to be efficient, okay, and don't use clone or something, you will um, play with uh, point pointers and borrow like that. It, it's why it's hard. A good point. Good point. So let's go. Uh, so you want to be productive, okay, and for that you you need tests, of course. The tests are embedded in the language. They are easy to write. Uh, Okay, uh, why I do this? Oh, no, sorry. So you just have to make this notation, okay? And on top of a function, and that become a, a test, okay? Uh, we use uh, the exclamation point uh, mark is for macro, okay? But we use asset and we do just verify that the function doesn't panic, okay? And if it doesn't panic, the, the test pass. So it's cool. Uh, this is a true function uh, that came from the rayon library. So he create I forgot all the time. Uh, he created a thread pool. I, okay, he created a thread pool and just verified the number of thread are correct. Okay, just, that's it with the asset here, and that's all. Okay, all the um, all the tests are run in parallel. Okay, they have to be atomic. You can have tests that reference each other, okay, which is good <laughs> because <laughs> it's painful when you have tests that depend one over. And for benchmark, it's omitted too, so you just have to add the bench here notation like the test and use the bencher. Uh, the, it's something you uh, it's pass in parameters of your function. And call the beater is only have one method, okay? And so the benchmark is integrate, which is cool. Uh, this is very powerful because the documentation in Rust look like this. This is a true uh, that came from the library, the HTTP library in Rust for make uh, happen something in a cookie, okay? And you see this. This method, so you have an example of code here, okay? It's uh, a markdown, markdown syntax, okay? And the thing is, which is really powerful, uh, the only language that has this feature is Python. Uh, not natively, you need an extension. The thing is, this code, okay, in the documentation is compiled, run it, and tested, okay? And if the test, if the code doesn't compile or the test doesn't pass, your documentation is not create, okay? Which is very powerful because your documentation is all the time at the correct version. And you, if you take a, a library and see in the documentation, you can be sure to, you can use the um, example of code, okay? That's fucking powerful. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like that. So uh, we have crates IO. It's like uh, npm IO or other stuff. It's to uh, we we call um, a library a crate. Okay, and so this is um, uh, a, a registry for all the crates. Okay, just don't lie at it. And the docs is hosted in Docker, DocsRS, okay, for free. So if you create a library and push your crates on um, on this website, the docs will be available online for free, okay, on this website. It's a good tool. And so this is the uh, the code you you saw, okay, uh, on the cookie happened, and this example, okay, you know when you look at this code, this code will work. For sure, okay. It's very cool to have a documentation that 
is correct. And I think it's readable. I love the color. I don't know for you. <laughs> so you need some tooling. I will. <laughs> it's funny, huh? <laughs> So for the tooling, uh, of course, because it's a language, uh, we use Cargo, okay, it's our dependency manager, okay, that worked really well, okay, it's, that was written by the two guys that made uh, Bundler, the package manager in Ruby, okay, so they took your, their experience and to, to this project, so it's very fun. Um, uh, um, behind the, the REST compiler, we use LLVM compiler, okay? So the, the backend compiler is LLVM, so we are able to deploy on all server, I think. I think X86, it's the most platform where people want to go, but uh, you have all other platforms. But the thing is, when you have LVM compiler behind, you can get all the tooling and don't reinvent the wheel. So when you are a C or C++ developer, you can still use your own tools like GDB, LVMDB, uh, KCOF of recovery, Valgreen. And we have some specific stuff just for REST, like the REST format. You have the same in Go, okay, the Go format, and Clippy, the linter. But it's cool because uh, the team that developed REST doesn't have to rewrite a new debugger, okay? We just use uh, GDB, which is very great. Uh, for the ID, uh, IntelliJ ID uh, has a plugin, an official plugin. Um, VS Code, it's, uh, it's based on the, serv how we call this? It's LS server, um, Scala has the same tools. It's a server language side. I forgot the name. Uh, someone can help me. Do you have a, a Scala developer in the room? For the compilation? No? Okay. <laughs> Civil and text. Uh, the integration in Emacs and Vim work, okay? So, do you have question on the tooling? No? Yeah? Um, you mentioned the tests are built in and they can't depend on each other, but what do you do about like test setup and shared test setup? Oh, you, you don't have it. You just just uh, make a cargo, okay, test, and that will run all the tests. You have two types of tests, unit test and uh, integration test. The integration tests have to be put in a specific file. Uh, on the root of your project, you have a test uh, dot .rs, okay, and you put mostly all the, no, this is a folder, sorry, uh, a test folder, and you put all the integration tests in it. And for the unit uh, test, you can put this anywhere on your source code, which is very funny because you can have a pattern with, you have a function, and all the tests related to the function just below. Okay, which is cool, because when you look at the function, you can know how to use it, because the text are just below. Yeah? Um, I only encounter requests and do Firefox get the driver, and the original driver. What are you using for? Yeah, that, that will, uh, I wish saw this uh, just uh, after a few slides. So we continue? Okay, continue. So the Rust community is like, uh, I think we know is the, the number are wrong. It's uh, 16,000 uh, crates, uh, 2,000 uh, 2, contributors. We are the third, for the third year on Stack Overflow, we, this is the most loved language by, for developers. Uh, and the HS most popular language on GitHub for new project which is cool. So you have a true community behind, and don't be scared to be alone. A lot of people are cool and will help you. So for the pupils, why you can use Rust for system develop for all the system development and kernel part, video game, embedded system, and backend HTTP that need uh, performance, okay, and WebAssembly, because Rust will be the target for WebAssembly. Okay, uh, the thing is, it's very easy to write WebAssembly code 
with Rust because we have a lot of tooling around this. And mobile development, the thing is, uh, for mobile development, you can write um, a Rust library and share this on iOS and Android directly. So you just write once, okay, and share it on all the mobile platform, which is cool, because the uh, FFI is very powerful. Uh, so I want to add Clever Cloud, and at Clever Cloud, we are a hosting company, okay, we host application of company, and we have a cluster of um, Mongo and everything that people need, because we are a cloud. We can host mostly everything, and the thing is, we have written a, um, a load balancer. So before that, we use Asha proxy, but now we use Rust. So it's a load balancer written in Rust, so that use a lot of network parts, and so all the memory problem was avoided with Rust. Uh, I think the, the language is fun because you have the uh, same. Uh, powerful, um, uh, it's like all camel. You have the same poorness, okay, which is cool. Uh, so ma mastering rest, this is a problem, and the, I think the only problem. Ownership and bo uh, the ownership model, okay, is hard because um, it's not natural. So to you will fight against the compiler during a long time, but after you reach this, you can ma you master this. You become like this, a true hero. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, this is the QR code for the slide. Uh, this is my Twitter. My name is Alessio Coltaracci. I work at Clover Cloud. We have a stand if you want, and we are a sponsor of the 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 party this night. Uh, this is a voucher for the if you want to try Clover Cloud. This is my email if you want to contact me. Thank you very much. We have four minutes for question. If people have question, this is the last checkpoint. It's not a slide of a checkpoint, but it's a checkpoint. Okay, you killed the final boss. Clap, clap.